Hey, Steve Peterson here with Infinity Investments and welcome to our channel where we talk all things commercial and investment real estate. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about whether to buy or to lease the commercial real estate for your business. I do a lot of stuff for investors, but the, today's video is for entrepreneurs and business owners. As a lot of, you know, the economy is kind of getting back and rolling and a lot more people have either started businesses or are moving locations or expanding their business and they're trying to figure out, well, look, what's best for me? Should I lease my space or should I buy my space? And I don't think that there's one blanket answer for everyone. And so there's three things I want to talk to you guys today about things that you should consider on whether to buy or whether to lease. And the first thing is, what is your cost of capital? All right, what is your cost of capital? And what I mean by cost of capital, is the cost of your money, the cost of your operations, the cost of your opportunity cost in terms of your time, the, the capital, your intellectual capital, what does that cost you, right? And so this is a very important determination, a very important thing for you to determine in order to figure out, well, you know, if I, you know, if I go out and lease a place, if I go out and buy a place, uh, you, you know you're gonna have to pay rent if it's a lease. You're not gonna have to pay mortgage if it's if you're owning. So what you need to look at is what is your cost of capital. Okay, so are you paying for this simply out of operations, or are you a new venture? Have you raised capital, right, in order to expand or in order to start your company, right? So let's say for instance, let's say you've raised capital. Uh, you got, you know, uh, maybe you got a, a, a idle loan. And maybe that's at one percent interest, or maybe you got a bank loan, line of credit. And maybe that's at three or four percent interest. That's a cost of capital for you. So you know that hey, I can go out here and and uh, lease a space or buy a property with that money. There's a cost associated. All right, and if it's a raised money of some sort of some sort from a loan from a bank, or let's say you went out and raised capital through investors, got a bigger company, say you raised five ten million dollars. From investors you don't have profits coming in or revenues coming in right now but you raise money and you need a location right so that money you raise has a cost right it's not free even free money has a cost what is that and you need to take that into account as you go out and lease or buy so that you can figure out what's the best move for you now let's say you have you're not raising capital or you haven't raised capital you're going to pay your out you're going to pay this lease or mortgage out of your operations right well, what is the cost of that? In other words, if you took that money and put it back in your business, let's just say, what can you earn? On, 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 what sort of rate of return can you earn on that? Now, here's the deal. One thing to consider. You probably need a location in order to operate your business. Although many of us have figured out how to run our business more virtually, at the end of the day, there's nothing like having a quality functional space for your operation to keep you profitable, to keep you doing what you need to do. So when you look at cost of capital, there's a lot of different factors, all right? But it's simply, if, you're, if you have investor capital or a debt, there's a specific cost to that. And then you have a specific cost to every single dollar that you make. If you put that into your business, what is that thing going to yield you back? And essentially, you want to make sure that when you're going out and leasing a space or you're, when you're owning a space, all right, that cost for that, you know, uh, uh, let's just say you're going to go out and get a mortgage. You don't want to get a mortgage interest rate higher than the interest rate that you're going to be paying to your lender or higher than the rate of return that you're going to be paying to your investors. Ideally, that rate of mortgage that you're going to pay should be lower. And ideally, that rate of that lease rate, it, it, you, know, you know, it should represent a value, represent a value for you spending that money. In other words, you don't want to be over leveraging your business. You don't want to be overspending on a space. It's kind of a complicated way to look at it, but there's some education that'll help you out. The CCIM Institute has a series of classes you can go through to get your CCIM designation, but there's one class and it's called CI 103. It's called user analysis. And if you're really interested in diving into this, I suggest you take that course, especially you executives out there who might be leasing, buying space on a regular basis. User analysis will really break down what a company's cost of capital is and how to analyze whether you should lease a space or whether you should own a space. Because some people should lease, some people should own, right? And if you 
you use a mathematical formula to help you out, you can get there. If you simply just look at, well, I got a loan, what is that interest rate? Or hey, I make money in my business. Every time I take a dollar and I put it in my business, it earns me $10, right? Um, so then, hey, you know, I'm getting 100% of my, of my money or return. So I then it makes sense for me to go out and then lease, all right? So that's the first thing, so figuring out what your cost of capital is. Number two was what are your expansion plans? <clears throat> Everybody should have plans to expand, all right? We entrepreneurs, you're either moving forward or you're moving backwards. You move forward or you're moving backwards. You make a prof profit or you're taking a loss, right? <clears throat> really no in between there. So, if you're saying, hey, like we have a brokerage, my, my plan is I want to grow to three offices and 100 agents in the next two years. You know, we're, we've got close to 30 agents in one office right now. So that's our expansion plan. So I'm going to need more space eventually, right? You may be having a mature company and say, look, this is where we are. We just need somewhere where people can park. Or we just need somewhere where, you know, our, we have we can meet with a, a client, wh whatever. But we would also have some kind of expansion plan. So <clears throat> does this space provide, uh, uh, you know, shelter for us if we want to expand our company? Does it help us to springboard to the next space? Uh, if you have the massive plans to expand and grow and you buy, let's say, a 10,000 square foot place, and you know in two, three years you need 20, 30,000 square foot, well, maybe that's not the best. Maybe it makes more sense to lease. But if you're like, hey, I know I'm going to need 30, 40,000 square feet, then is it feasible for you to go out and lease that right now? Is it feasible for you to go out and buy that right now? Okay, so you really need to sit down and say, well, what are your expansion plans? How does that work? Okay, and within this, within I say, what is your expansion plans? Even if you're not ready to go out there and expand the company and do all this, what is the budget that you are comfortable with spending, right? Uh, within your company, right? Like in real estate, they say you don't want to spend more than 10% of your gross income on marketing, right? If you're spending more than 10%, you're not as effective. I know I know some people who argue the other way, hey, I spend more than that, brings me in money. But rule of thumb kind of is 10%. You know, there's not like a hard and fast rule of thumb of what you should spend for your space, but it probably shouldn't be more than 30 to 40%, right? So if you're bringing in, let's just say, uh, 20 grand a month, you probably shouldn't be spending more than eight grand a month on your space, you know? Just, you know, it's probably be somewhere at least 6,000, but definitely no more than 8,000. So as you're figuring out how are you gonna grow, how are you gonna expand, you need to be thinking about what percentage of your income is going to go towards your space, right? And plan that out. Don't just, as you're an entrepreneur, as business owners, we can't just think this year. You know, we got to think three to four to five, ten years out, out especially when you're signing a lease. Because at least landlords going to want, you know, commercial lease at least two or three years. I mean, a lot of them want five years, maybe more, but at least that, right? So you got to be thinking, you get a mortgage, you know, it's amortized over 30. Most mortgages may be due in 10 years, due in 15 years. So this is not a, a one year, 12 month uh, type of uh, 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 analysis. We need to think about this, right? Very, 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 very important, okay? What is your expansion plans? How much are you, you thinking about you're gonna need to, to spend in terms of, you know, your business? And that goes in conjunction with kind of your cost of capital, like I was talking about the first time. You know, figuring that out. What is your cost of operation? What is your cost of the money you bring in? And then are you planning to expand? But you got to be, you don't want to be too aggressive on this. You want to be aggressively conservative. That's what I like to say. Aggressively conservative with how you're going to go out there and make your moves. All right. So the third and final thing to consider when you're out there, am I going to lease? Am I going to buy? What are we going to do? Uh, it is is figuring out okay the logistics of leasing and buying, and what I, this is what I would say. What's your company's investment plan? When I say it's figuring out the logistics of whether you should lease or buy, do you have an investment plan for your company? All right, and many of you CEOs or owners out there, we we don't necessarily have four hundred one ks or pension plans or anything, especially for small businesses. Maybe big corporate setups do. Small businesses, we're just thinking about making money and building a company. Have, take a step back and think about what's your investment plan, right? 
If you have an investment plan and you're making a bunch of money and you're investing in the stock market, making a bunch of money and you're investing in rental property, then you may not be so concerned with owning your own building for your business because you got other investments. But let's just say you don't have any other investments. You don't have an IRA or 401k. Then your company is what's going to set you up for retirement. Owning your real estate can really, really help you out in that, in that, in that sense. Every time you pay that mortgage, you're basically paying into your, you know, I don't want to say retirement, but you're paying into your investment plan. Because that's how that goes. When you're when you're saying, hey, I'm going to make this mortgage payment, a percentage goes towards principal every single time. You're building your equity in that property. And in many ways, many business owners use their business properties for their retirement. A lot of people end up saying, hey, look, I'm going to sell this building and lease this property back. That way I, I get a chunk of cash and I can, you know, um, continue operating my business. Or people want to say, I want to sell the business and the real estate comes with it. So that makes it more valuable. But it goes back into the logistics of, hey, what, what is your investment plan? Are you investing in it? But you might be a stock market expert and say, I, I, don't, worry, I don't need my building because I'm, I'm making so much money in the stock market. I understand how this works. Or you own a bunch of apartment buildings and you're saying, hey, I make my cash flow and my retirement is going to come from these apartment buildings. I just need a quality space at the best price and I need flexibility. So these are a bunch of things for you to consider. I'm not sitting here telling you you need to buy or you need to lease. I'm saying you need to look at a formula and figure some things out. And I think what you should do is book a time with us so we can sit down and talk about it or book a time with a, a broker you know and trust in your market and talk about this, come up with a plan because you need to have a, a really good space plan for your business to make your business efficient and get the highest return on your time, effort, and dollars. All right, hope this was helpful. If it is, don't be a like, subscribe, stay tapped into this content in the commercial investment space. Uh, best of success to you, not only in your investing career, but in your business uh, career as well. Have a blessed day.